All right, okay, let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome back. If you were here earlier today, uh, it's good to see you again. If you're here for the first time today, uh, it's nice to see you. My name is Ryan Selvey. I am your host uh, all week long of the Adobe Live Takeover. The Adobe Live team is uh, on vacation, having that work-life balance. And so I am stepping in to take over and uh, bring on some of the finest people of the internet to bring you the best content possible. I'm really excited today to have Christy Campbell on the show. I have been able to leverage this week of streams as a means to um, <laughs> reach out to the people that I really admire and be able to start a conversation with them. So uh, this was a good excuse to be able to talk to Christy, which I'm really excited about. Um, if you are not familiar with my face, hi, nice to meet you. My name is Ryan. I am a motion designer uh, live streamer here on Behance. I stream on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays at 4 p.m. Uh, generally. Obviously, that's not happening this week because I am here for Offset, the show when the Adobe Live team is Offset. Uh, also, I use Offset uh, features a lot in the intros and animations that we have working around this entire show. Um, we have a lot planned for you today, a lot to get through. I'm really excited to show you um, Christy's work. She is the creator um, of Pink Pony Creative, which you guys might have seen on other Adobe Lives. You might have seen her around Instagram and TikTok. She knows her way around those social platforms better than like anyone I know and um, gives really great advice on design and running your own business. And I'm really excited to hear what she has to say and any advice that she can give us. Also, if you guys have questions for her, please go ahead and put them in the chat as I uh, talk with her on screen. Um, right now, we are live on YouTube and on Behance. The chat takes place on Behance. So if you're over on the YouTube, hi, good to see you. If you're in the replay, hey, what's up? But head over to Behance. You can see the chat. You can be part of the conversation. I will be responding to it as we go on. Um, and already, I can see so many people saying hello. Uh, lots of fans of Christy's work. Uh, Malini just said that she loves Christy's work. Um, we have Voodoo Val and Annika, Wade, Umicorn, Oliver, uh, Barbara, um, Katarina. Hey, hi. Good to see you. Um, RB, lots of familiar faces, lots of new faces. Hi to Jack. Um, it's really great to have you guys here, and I appreciate you tuning in. We're here for the next two hours, so we're going until 2 o'clock Western time, um, or we're going until 5 o'clock Eastern time. So um, with no further ado, I'm going to go ahead and pull up our guest so everyone please welcome christy hey how's Hello, it going ryan it is so good i'm so excited to be here thank you for having me yeah it's wonderful to have you i saw from um one of our regular viewers steve he's excited because there's a fellow kiwi on adobe um so yes i think i remember steve from the last live actually he was there and yeah. watching so thanks for the support steve means the world <laughs> the regular kiwi's got to stick together i still want to visit um you guys have a beautiful country, and um, I'm so jealous that that's your backyard. I, I mean, oh, I love New York. Don't get me it's wrong. It's amazing. But, um, <laughs> I, I'm very jealous of where you live. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Um, it's such a nice, relaxed place to live. So I feel very blessed to be here. <laughs> oh, also hello to Norina, who says hi. I've been waiting for this, and an MD uh, Tib who says can't wait for Christy. Um, Yay! So everyone's very excited <laughs> to see you. Um, oh, that's so exciting. Do you want to go ahead and just kind of give a little bit of background about yourself, um, who you are as a designer, who you are as a person? Uh, we can kind of start off with that. Yeah, sure. So I am Christy Campbell. I am a brand and graphic design designer from Auckland, New Zealand. Um, I own a studio called Pink Pony Creative. I've had it for about two years now, and we do everything from branding uh, to just general graphic design, like print and signage and vehicle wraps, all that sort of stuff. And for so many businesses as well, like um, anything from beauty brands to pizza trucks to restaurants to fitness brands. So it's like a huge variety of stuff that we create. But no, I just love uh, social. what social media has created for me. It's been amazing. And um, I'm so excited to have opportunities like this to get to share my work and tips and tricks. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, social media, like you said, has been so, so kind to you, uh, but not without your hard work, obviously. Um, <laughs> it wouldn't have just necessarily landed on your lap. The The content that you're creating is some of the best that I've seen in the creative uh, environment on social media. And you really have um, a lot to teach about being able to successfully like cut things down really, really tight into TikTok or reels or even just a post, um, but still having it be like, oh my God, I learned so much just from my, you know, otherwise boring scrolling of memes and <laughs> people who are way too attractive on my feed. <laughs> <laughs> I totally get, yeah. Trust me, it's really hard to fit like a tutorial into about 30 seconds, especially when mm -hmm. TikTok only showcased like 30 seconds of work. It was so yeah. hard to put it all in there. So you got to quickly find your own way to do it, but it's been great. It's been successful, I think. So I saw that TikTok <laughs> is going to experiment with 10 minute videos, which I don't know how I feel about. I don't feel like people are going to watch know. it, but you know what? They're going to experiment. And you know what? I got to. I got to hand it to them. At least they're trying it out. Um, I agree. So. I completely agree there. Like uh, my attention span is so short these days because of TikTok. And so I'm just like 10 minutes. I don't know if I could wait around that long. It has to be very engaging. Yeah. Got lots to do. Lots to <laughs> yeah, do. So much to which do. Which we do have a lot to do today as well. Also, everyone over, um, like Hank, Fernando, Mokid, Christian, uh, Vimal, all over on YouTube. It's great to see you guys here. Um, Voodoo Val is letting you know that um, all the chat's happening over on Behance. So um, I do want to make sure that you still feel seen as you, um, as well, Nirja. But um, he's wondering, are you going to be doing something or just an interview? We will be doing plenty today. We'll be going through a lot. Um, but I think the first thing that we can do is check out your work, which is pretty in interviewing, but um, exciting nonetheless. Let's look at your work. All right. So I pulled up your website. Uh, I know you said you started Pink Pony two years ago, which means that it was a pandemic creation. Um, what kind of led you to creating Pink Pony and um, kind of how, how did that all start? Well, it started out as a 100 day design challenge. And I totally didn't mean really mean for it to become a business, which was really cool. Um, I just like I was working for a one band business and I felt like my creativity wasn't being explored enough. So I thought, what better way to get more creative every day than to do this like hundred day design challenge. And I was using Instagram to just keep me accountable and keep me going. So I just started posting stuff. And then I think when I'd finished it, I had about like three people saying to me, Oh, you know, could I, could, could you create a logo for me? So I was like, yep, let's go, let's do it. And it kind of just went from there. And that's how Pink Pony started. So I didn't mean for it to like become a business. And I think that's why I called that's it the beauty Pony. Of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I was just quite relaxed about the whole thing. So I think I didn't put any pressure on myself to make it a business. So I think that's why it kind of worked out for me. Um, the casual approach has worked well. So I'm going to no, I mean, keep doing the casual the approach. <laughs> the biggest hits in life are always things that people don't expect to be hits. Like when you're trying to make a hit, you're trying to make a big brand or something like that. A lot of times that's the things that don't make it through. The things that you just kind of casually do from passion products are the things that turn into things that are valuable. Um, exactly. I did see someone in the chat say that they were missing the pink pony light. Um, you are in your offices uh, and that is actually at your home, right? Um, mm -hmm. so, That's in my uh, house. I was going to do it there today, but things weren't working well um, at home at, with the internet. So I thought in the office, wish my head, I had my sign here. It's, yeah, it's but it's still there. Don't worry. Oh it still exists. It's not gone. <laughs> uh, it's beautiful. Where did you get it through again? I think you, you, you told me in a uh, pre-interview. I did. It was through Neon Designs in Auckland, yeah. New Zealand. So if you're looking for a sign and you're in New Zealand, hit them up. They're amazing. And that's really Great cool quality. that it's a New Zealand uh, business as well. Yeah, that wasn't a paid plug. It was just a plug. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. Um, and I, I've, I've mentioned this in a few different... Um, I, uh, I've mentioned this in uh, all of my different streams. All the, the voices and opinions and commentary is by me and Christy. Uh, we are on Adobe Live, but Adobe Live has not <laughs> signed off any endorsements <laughs> or paid things or sponsorships uh, as much as I would like to lead you to believe by me saying, um, you know, this is great or that's great. Uh, these are all just our own opinions. Um, but we're going to be truthful with you. So uh, if you have something that you want to plug, uh, I know later we're going to talk about some brushes and you're talking about maybe some brushes that you want to talk about where you purchase from. Uh, we also love to hear that as well. Um, and yeah, just like to kind of figure it out. 
So before we hop into anything, though, I know we're still looking at your work real quick. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I mentioned a few times that um, you have uh, these reels, which obviously are racking up like enormous amounts of um, views, which is really exciting. I mean, you look at these and like so many of them are over like 100,000 plays, which is just miraculous. <laughs> but do you kind of want to break down a little bit how you approach um, creating a reel, where the ideas come from? Like, do you sit down and knock out a bunch of them or is it more of like a daily thing? Um, to be honest, like the real creation and like my content creation is so um, off the whim, like on a whim, I guess, just whatever I'm feeling that day. Um, I don't actually plan my content. I don't know if that's the best strategy, but I kind of just go for it. And whatever I'm feeling, like I said, I'll just start creating. I really liked, like this one, love to create stuff that's sort of really quick, choppy and changey, because like I said earlier as well, your attention span just in general these days is so short. So keeping them really quick and um, choppy keeps your attention, like keeps your focus. Um, yeah. And even like this, you know, I'm, I'm sort of creating this like how to showing a bit of a um, this is how I've done it, the process. And then I show the final final product at the end. And people love these videos, even the time lapses like this one. I don't know what it is, but people love the time lapses. No, I mean, it's just great but... to see a, a final <laughs> piece of work and be like, the, it feels so un unobtainable and it feels like oh, I could never do that. Like that's so yeah. pretty. That's beautiful. And then you kind of see a time lapse and you're like, oh, OK, I kind of at least get the concept of how it came to fruition. So maybe it is something that I can do and maybe I can use some of these techniques or these tools or these chips. Yeah, um, for Wenda sure. says, loved your latest Instagram reel, Christy. Pretty inspiring. So oh, um, amazing. Thank fans you. That, which is cool. I love that. Uh -huh. These are really interesting. I'll just make a little note on these artboards. I get questions about this all the time about where I use these artboards because people mm -hmm. will see them a lot on my Instagram. It's become like a sort of a strategy that I post and how I share my work, but they're purely for social media. So I'm literally creating, once I've created a brand, I create these just to take a photo of my screen to share on social media, which seems a bit odd <laughs> when I think about it. But like this doesn't actually get shown to the client. Um, obviously, I think it's what it is, is designers can resonate when they see, you know, the illustrator um, tools there and they love to see that and they mm -hmm. they can see it and think, oh, you know, that's something I resonate with and I've seen it before. So they, they like it. It works. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, uh, Christelle says, oh, nice. I love your vector drawings, Christy. Um, which, yeah, no, you're also an illustrator on top of being a designer and content creator. Like you wear many different hats, which is very admirable. Um, oh, thank you. We're actually going to do some illustrations today. So I'm excited about sharing a little bit of behind the scenes about how I do those. Yeah, 100%. Um, <laughs> do you want to start off with uh, just uh, pulling up some of your sketchbook pages and then we can kind of yes. look a little bit into your process as well? Let's do it. All right. All right. Sounds good. So this is a segment that we call... Uh, what's in your sketchbook, which is uh, pretty on the nose as far as uh, how it goes, but that's so, what I'm doing. Ooh, what's in your sketchbook? All right, cool. Um, so you just want to do a quick screen share and then we can pull up um, oh, yeah, sure kind of what you've got going on. Because we do have the idea of a traditional sketchbook. Obviously, people all work in their own silos, their own workflows. Um, and when I asked Christy about this, she said she could pull up a old um, project of hers and she can kind of explore how she got to a final piece. So here it is. Sure thing. I'm actually going to open a slightly different one. So to start with, this was an idea that I had for a brand. Um, I was creating a pizza brand and they were like a pizza truck that was going to be in Hawaii. And I was really wanting to create this sort of unique kind of edgy um, style. And I thought what better way to create this like edgy rough look than actually just hand draw some elements. So I got like a pen, a proper pen, not a pencil, because that was the, the, the look that I wanted to achieve was this sort of pen drawing aesthetic and I just drew out a whole lot of scribbles doodles I, I did you know some you can see here even like these random scribbles um, the random words that are really just written out and almost look like a bit rushed but that was the look I was going to go for so I drew them all out and once I had those and I was pretty happy with them I then scanned them on my phone 
phones are amazing for scanning, by the way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> didn't like know that and they trick. didn't always be. And there's also a feature within Illustrator. I don't know if you've ever used this before. I've used it once. I have not gone back to it, but I should. And I just don't know why I don't. But they have this app now that you can literally scan like a black and white thing. And it'll throw it into Illustrator and turn it into like an image image trace vector. Um, and it works I, amazingly. That um, is crazy. I think some yeah. people have told me about that before, but I haven't got around to it. But I really should. That's good. See, that's how I am. I'm like, I know it exists. I've used it once. It was at my old agency. And like, there's no reason why I have not used it more besides purely I being like, oh, I forget how to do that. Like, I'm, you know, I don't have the app or whatever. Um, but it's incredible. Exactly. So. It, yeah, it's amazing. Kind of like the phone with the scanning and the notes works mm -hmm. sort of the same, but that one even sounds even better. But so basically I drew these, scanned them in, and then from there I opened them up. Um, and I did a little playing around on Photoshop where I sort of changed the contrast um, just to enhance the black lines a bit before I pulled it into Illustrator. And then from there, um, this is when I took it into Illustrator and actually just went and image traced it. So you can see here, these are my uh, drawings. And I basically just straight up image traced the drawings um, and created a vector out of them. And I didn't even adjust them. Like that was the look that I wanted to go for. So I just wanted to make sure I had this, um, this beautiful rough, edgy sketch look um and you can change the colors with that and everything and then from there that's when i turned it into a beautiful brand so you can see here there's a bit of an insight into what i did with it um i created that really cool pattern bought it in through like the back of the logos and the brand marks and even you can see it here like um the details in the pizza box yeah. This was actually just a concept that was unused, so it never was the chosen one. The chosen concept was definitely a favorite, but this was still high up there. I, I loved how, the outcome of this. This is really cool. The inside of the pizza box is such unused real estate, um, but it would be such an easy and scalable design choice because it's just pieces of cardboard that you fold up. Like printing on the inside is no more expensive than printing on the outside. Like. I, I'm, I'm exactly. surprised that you don't see that more often. And it's really cool to see the sketches of it as well because it feels like um, it feels more homemade, especially since it's a sketchy feel. Definitely. So. Yeah. And I wanted it to feel really unique from like other pizza box, I guess. And like you said, like even stuff like this would be great marketing. Imagine if you're on Instagram and you open your pizza box and these all your drawings there. It's such a cool, cohesive branded effect. It's, um, no, it turned out really nice. So that's uh, slice, slice baby that's... is funny and also uh, <laughs> makes me roll my eyes, and I am all about it, hundred <laughs> <laughs> um, percent. No, I loved how this turned out. So that's a little insight into like one way I can create my drawings. Um, but otherwise, I do most of them digitally. I actually oh. very rarely do hand sketch stuff. So, but, but it's great. It's great to be able to have that flexibility, um, both as an artist and as someone who's providing things to clients as far as like just getting a different perspective. Um, and even if it isn't the final piece, maybe it will spark something that they'll be like, oh, well, maybe we can apply this idea to here or we could, you know, this resonates with me in this way. So I think it's a, a great approach and it's a cool process to even explore, even if it doesn't necessarily reach the end point. Yeah, exactly. It was a lot of fun. Uh, over in the chat, uh, people are really excited about the capture uh, for the the phone to vectors. People um, are also um, repping your pinkponycreative.com slash shop, which we'll pull up in just a little bit. Um, and then uh, Mwenda wants to know, is when drawing the sketches, do you draw inspirations from images or do you just draw um, from your brain? So with these, what I actually did was I pulled up, like, I literally Google searched pizza and just had all these images of pizza. And I just started drawing stuff out just to make sure I kind of, I wasn't missing anything or there was something that inspired me on those pizza pictures. Um, but yeah, these were all just out of my head, I guess. Um, but often I'll use a reference to help me kind of use scale and things like that to just get the image looking right. And then how'd you get to, um, I know obviously pink is your favorite color, or at least I would assume. Is that uh, assumption? It is, but I actually like never wear pink. Uh, you nah. can see pink a lot in, in my business, but I mm -hmm. never really wear pink. As a kid, for sure. 
my room was like covered in pink. <laughs> yeah, but it's funny. They always say that it's funny that like artists for the most part, like we love colors and we love everything. And then we all just wear really boring clothes. I mean, <laughs> about for people with like fashion or what have you. But even with fashion, like it's still so frequently just all black. I don't know why mm. we do it, but we do it. <laughs> uh, I'm wearing a little bit of green today, so I'm really out of my comfort zone. So there I don't you go. Know. <laughs> uh, the reason I asked this though is, how do you kind of come up with a color palette? How do you kind of land where you want to um, find the colors for a brand? Do you cycle through different um, variations, or is it kind of like with these thought experiments, you just kind of pick something and run with it? It's really interesting because I think a lot of the time my initial ideas actually are my best ideas and I've come to learn that sometimes I'll look like obviously ex I'll explore lots but I always revert back or most of the time revert back to my original thought which is an interesting thing like I feel like I have this gut feeling it's almost like a little bit of magic <laughs> and yeah. I just can feel that this is the right option I'll explore that but then like I said just come back to it but a really great website and if you guys don't use it yet is the Adobe Color website that is pretty much where I get all my color inspiration from. You can search up like different color palettes and even um, kind of you could search up put like dark purples, dark moody purples or something, you know, maybe it'll come up with a palette like this where you can see the, the purple and the pinks and really nice contrasting colors. So if you don't use it already, already highly, highly recommend it because it is amazing. Yeah, and it's just a good way to experiment with color and the idea of like, even if it doesn't have a project, just seeing how things with color theory interact with one another. So I think that's that's great. Um, Anna that's says so on Wednesdays, we wear pink. She also said that she also oh. uh, Googles pizza from time to time, but that's probably not related. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Hey, we all do. Love a good pizza uh, on a Friday night. <laughs> also, Reverb Mike says, if you try to add pineapple to our pizzas, we block your number. <laughs> Which no. I am not a pineapple on pizza guy, but I know that's also controversial. So where do you I, land I on am. it? So I you definitely, like you got to have pineapple on your pizza for oh, sure. Oh, man. <laughs> fighting words. Um, cool. So this is really great exploration, kind of like the beginning thought process um, and how you begin a piece. Do you want to hop a little bit into what we're going to work on today? Sure thing. I'm really excited to show you guys what we're going to work on today. So I was thinking about something we could do and Pink Pony is all about, obviously we use themes of ponies in there, not like directly, but I wanted to somehow showcase that. And I just love the cowboy aesthetic. I don't know what it is. I grew up on a farm. So country like cowboy boots and like hats is so my thing. I just adore it. So I thought what more, like how, how much more fun could we have than creating some kind of cowboy looking brand? And I thought, Absolutely. let's create this, um, brand or illustrations for a business that sells custom cowboy hats and custom cowboy boots for women um, or for anyone really so this was kind of like the aesthetic that I wanted to go for um, and now, like where do you go it. when you're gathering inspiration Pinterest is, is yeah Pinterest. Pinterest is like definitely my number one source especially for like images like this maybe not necessarily uh, like graphics and artwork I love Behance for that but um, this kind of stuff is really coming, like just comes from Pinterest really. And I just, it's great. And their algorithm is great also. Of oh, just it's as amazing. Too. Yeah. And to your point, definitely. yeah, like uh, like definitely not knocking on Behance to use Behance for finding inspiration for art, but especially if I'm, yeah. especially like drawing references for just getting vibes of like similar things. You can find boards where people gather different stuff. Um, Pinterest mm -hmm. is always a really good place to go for um, those starting parts now exactly. below you also have a bunch of different um i'm guessing other inspiration that you have uh what were the reasons why you pulled these guys so i wanted to create some cool uh vector illustrations for this piece because i do get asked a lot about them so i thought what better way to do it on adobe live and i found these and i loved these illustrations especially this like line artwork but there was some uh, parts of the art that was filled in color. Um, I love the contrast of like the pink and the red and even these uh, sort of fonts down here, these typefaces just being that like quite bubbly feminine um, style and even the cow print. You can't go, you can't go wrong with a cow print on some cowboy boots. Of course <laughs> so I not. thought we'll bring that in. Yeah. And, and use that through our illustrations. I thought it'd be a bit of fun. So Laura Vaz says, I would love to hear more about her steps and process when creating a brand, specifically what her thoughts are behind strategies, which I think we are going to get into with this as well, right? 
Definitely. Yeah. So to start with, with my branding, my process, it's all about, um, I'll kind of talk while I start designing. It's all about um, learning as much as you can about the business that you're designing this brand for. So I'll have a, a discovery call with these clients and we'll just talk through a whole lot of stuff about the business, target market, all that good stuff. And then we get into um, just the research stage, uh, researching like uh, competitors and everything like that and just gather a whole lot of information. And then I'll literally start pulling um, any inspiring images that I find like on Behance, pull them um, and use them as a bit of an um, inspiration mood board to move ahead with the brand. Um, and so sorry, these were made yeah, right? uh, physically, right? And you went and you um, just scanned them in, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. So these were drawn physically. Um, once again, I like pulled up a whole bunch of images on Google while I was drawing, just typed in like cowboy hat, just to get some um, scalability on them, just to make sure I had it right. And then I just started sketching stuff out. And the thing I love about Illustrator and drawing, like if I was to draw a cowboy hat straight off the bat, I'm not the best drawer in the world. I probably would. You can even see here a whole lot of sketching around it. I was trying to get the scale right. But when you bring it into Illustrator, you have the option to adjust it and make it perfect. So when drawing stuff, don't worry about making it perfect. I think that's the biggest thing that people forget is trying to get it right that first time. But you can adjust it and you can change it up. Yeah, I know really Bevan cool. uh, actually asked biggest tip for folks that suck at drawing is what they say. And I think that's just a really good point of like, use your tools to your advantage, work smarter, not harder. Mm -hmm. And the idea that like, maybe it's something that you do just roughly make a sketch on. But then when you bring it into Illustrator, you really have that ability to really refine your lines and slowly move things around until it looks good for you. Exactly. You know, even like this, if we were uh, creating a line here and we didn't really like where it was sitting on that edge that I had originally drawn, you can move it, you know, you can adjust it until you're really happy with it and uh, just keep working on it until it looks really good. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, like I said, honestly, I'm not the best drawer in the world, but... You look great, though. I love these. Oh, thank you. And they're very <laughs> um, work, clear. So, yeah. Like, just, I think that's um, the most important out of anything. It's just like, as long as the viewer can see it and say, I know what that is, then you, you, uh, exactly. it's successful. And that's the thing with art as well, especially with like illustrations is it's all in like the eye of the beholder. It doesn't have to be perfect. That could be part yeah. of the strategy for your brand is it's kind of like a bit messy or a bit grungy. And then you can add things like, um, you know, grains over it to make it even more edgy and grungy, which we'll probably do today, actually. Very cool. Yeah. Um, I see in here that uh, Jawad saying, I'd like to know how to build a portfolio because I cannot think of any. And I was searching for a fake design brief. If it can help me, it would help. So when you're making <gasps> up your fake design briefs, um, is there any sort of approach that you have to say that, OK, I want to make a pizza truck? Or is it kind of just like, a, let me think of something random and then just go with it? Yeah, so this is a great question because I did this for 100 days <laughs> for my design challenge. And I literally made them up on the day. Um, like when I woke up, I would start thinking about what am I going to design today? And some days I would have no idea and I would be quite stuck. Um, but I really took inspiration from everything around me. So try not to put a block on yourself, like open yourself up to everything you see, the people you interact with, um, even like the shops that you visit. So as a good example, I um, one day in my 100 day design challenge, I went and I uh, designed a brand for my local cafe it was just like a logo design that I did and I did like a menu design and they obviously didn't know about it because it was just a passion project for me but um yeah it was a place that I loved so I rebrand their shop and you can really like get inspiration from anywhere anything or anyone that you see um so try not to put a block on yourself um just open I'll also up. say um, bad design is sometimes the most inspiring design because you can see something and you can say this isn't good and it's not good for the reasons that I can identify and then you can then kind of create something from there. Exactly. And I think it's so important as a designer to learn to develop all, all your ideas, regardless if they're bad or good. Just keep developing, developing them like I'm so one to have an art board that's full of stuff and it's just like chock a block of the most random drawings, logos when I'm creating a brand because then I can always refer back to stuff if I want to and I can find those um, ideas that maybe they weren't so good in the um, first place but I ended up 
thinking, oh, this could really work for the brand. So it's important to. Yeah, that's something that I learned through watching a uh, video of Aaron Droplin, who's a famous mm. graphic designer. He is always like, copy and keep going, copy and keep going. So like when you're developing something, just making it so you can always go back and like yeah. you might use the smallest thing to um, to then, you know, uh, actually use four iterations down the line that like you don't have to recreate it you can just go back and say oh that right there i like how the a is looking there the you know the exactly brim yeah and that's something that like i've got two staff with me now and i encourage that like i want them to trial things and whether it's bad or good and just make these errors and and then we can kind of discover the best option for the brand or the illustration um um, yeah. Anil Sepkatoa <laughs> says, uh, are you using a mouse or pen for this? I'm actually using a Wacom tablet. Um, I love my Wacom. It has changed my life. So if you're a designer and you're interested in doing illustrations like this, or even just working in Illustrator a lot, highly, highly recommend getting a drawing tablet. It will change your life. Yeah, and you can just uh, you can just put down and you can drag the bezier curve just kind of like as you same would with a with a mouse or anything else but you probably exactly. feel like you have more control with the pen right so much more control it's sort of quite hard to get used to at first um mm -hmm. when i first started using the drawing pad i literally thought you didn't have to hold it down so i was hovering my hand like this and i was <laughs> wondering how on earth ever anyone would like work on their nine to five job doing that but oh my god really thank god we don't have to do that way though because your arm would just get so tired <laughs> it just hovering constantly a little bit over the over the pad <laughs> um so something yeah. i'm seeing that you're doing here is you have um put everything of your sketches on um a single layer and you've locked it so that you can then kind of turn it on and off at will mm -hmm. um do you feel like That's for the fun. most part you'll then stick to one layer for all your objects or will you kind of divide it between like cowboy hat and skull? I actually end up dividing it into layers of color, I guess, oh. color and textures maybe. So you'll see um, we'll start getting into um, some coloring and even adding some prints and textures to these. And I layer it in that way so that I can easily um, go in and adjust certain colors and textures because things will be so layered up um i don't necessarily have all the objects on separate layers um i actually only really work with like the main grouping of layers i don't actually drop down and use the drop downs which i know some designers do but you know i think design is all about the best way that works for you so <laughs> do, you have a, do you have a print background um i don't have a print background but i worked in businesses where we did a lot of print so okay. i worked for i was gonna say the way that you're approaching it with colors and stuff that is very like i don't have a print background but i lived with a print major for a little bit and that's so yeah. like the same way his brain worked was the idea of like dividing it up that way um, yeah yeah i think that's probably where it comes from because obviously if you're working with like you know foils and stuff you have to put everything mm -hmm. on a new bit uh, layer i want to um, learn how to do that that stuff is so cool Oh, it is a friend of mine sent me a Christmas card and it was like all these different foil inks and stuff. Oh, it was so cool. <laughs> Sorry, was I'm going to go back on my um, oh, I love I had a Chris Crawford. Oh, one of my friends is in the chat. Good to see you, Chris. Um, thanks for oh, tuning Chris. in. He's saying keeping this on the background while I work, loving these streams. So oh, I um, love thanks that. for being here. And then Ruth is saying, uh, this is a great question, Ruth. Um, she says, uh, when you're practicing on your passion projects, how did you manage your time between your personal and work life and yet find the time to design? How many hours did you dedicate to each project? And I think they're probably talking about the 100 day challenge. How did you kind of Definitely. juggle that? It was tough. Some days were a lot harder than others, especially I'm quite a social social bunny. So I love to hang with my friends and be with my husband and things. So trying to um, work it in, in between all that was difficult, but you've just got to set your mind to it and make the time. And it sounds a bit um, cheesy, <laughs> but you know, if you are struggling to find time to design a passion project wake up half an hour earlier i know not many people are gonna be like no i don't want to wake up half an hour earlier but that's what you've got to do if you want to improve get better at what your, your craft and um you know develop a business maybe one day you've got to put the time and effort into it and maybe that means waking up earlier or maybe it means not watching netflix one night and instead of that drawing or um, creating some art so yeah. and also if, um speaking from my experience like 
Also, the idea of setting time aside, like sometimes it all it takes is giving yourself the time to be there. Like, um, yeah, uh, Planet Fitness does a thing where they have like free pizza first Fridays and everyone kind of rolls their eyes at first with that. And they're like, why would you have pizza at a gym? But just the act of getting to the gym, like if exactly. you go to the gym, even if you walk to the gym, like the chances that you're going to turn around and walk out, they're still there. But like, like you get the pizza and you leave, but the chance that you're already there, like you're going to do it. So like if you set time up, like even if it is 30 minutes or if it's instead of Netflix or whatever, if you just open the program or you sit down and you start sketching, like they even say that with writing papers too. like, don't exactly. even worry about your first line. Just start writing. You can even be like the dummy dummy report on dummy dumb. And like, <laughs> it will then kind of begin. Just so I would just say just there. start. Give yourself the time and space and, and step it step in the gym per se. And then I think you can you can make it work. Yeah, so. definitely. You've got it there. You got it right. And just and especially for passion projects, create even if it's bad. Like yeah. there were some days, I'm pretty sure there was a couple of days where I wasn't feeling the best and I was a bit sick. And I created the most horrific things, but I still posted <laughs> them and I still created it. I look back now and I'm like that was questionable, but anyway. <laughs> it's part of your growth. And also, like, exactly. I'm so sick of artists that post sketchbook pages that clearly took eight hours. And they're like, oh, use my sketch. I'm like, <laughs> okay, you had to wait for the paint to dry for that watercolor. So it's not a sketch. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. I feel that. So, okay. um, All right. And Nail says, I have learned that I need to schedule a time with myself on my calendar. Yeah, that works. That's Absolutely. a great idea. Even if, it's, even if it's that, give you a reminder, an alarm. Any of the above. Definitely. And I, I love that. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to schedule stuff in. I keep saving. I have this um, <laughs> this habit of just saving my work because I get so afraid that it's going to oh. disappear into thin air. <laughs> That's so smart. I have um, lost quite a few things with my computer um, pooping out on me before. And uh, oh, no. I I've streamed <laughs> a few really times too. Worst. So people have seen, like, I, I'm sure I could probably find one of the streams where, like, I was like working in After Effects and my computer has an error and you just see, no. like, they have, like, you know, After Effects has a good job of doing auto save and stuff, but I was having yeah. a real computer issues for a while and there i remember one stream in particular it just, i just lost it and i just like had to stop streaming because you could just see the life just drain from my face <laughs> like two hours just gone i'm like all right you're like this is Whatever. great <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter oh so no you can never save too much in my mind that is too good so you can see here i'm starting to create my layers um i've just kind of picked a random color at the moment i did um, play with a couple of color palettes before coming on this live just to make sure I was kind of there was a color that I wanted to go with and I really love these like pinks and the purples pink pink pony how could we not create in pink today <laughs> I represent. Uh, yeah and I wanted just to have a couple of op options there. so do you find cool. yourself using the palette um, area of the illustrator a lot yeah a lot I tend to work in here um, I do also find that you know if the colors aren't right I'll just go into the um color here and actually make some adjustments to mm -hmm. make sure it's the exact color that i'd like it um i need to rely on um the color palette area more so than i already do i use libraries a lot that is something that i kind of yeah. held off on using for the longest time and then like maybe like three years ago i finally started exploring libraries and i love libraries just because you can have a color go across multiple projects and always access it which is really nice um definitely I I guess actually, oh my god i remember that stream which is the one when i lost everything oh no <laughs> <It's memorable. laughs> so it also made an People impact with others it. apparently yeah. <laughs> i love that so now I'm going and I'm kind of just creating some shadows and my initial idea for these, I actually don't want them to be perfect shadows. Um, what I'm actually going to do is create like a half tone effect, which is something I love doing in my illustrations. Um, so I'm going to show you guys how I, I show you how I do that today. I don't know if I have the most conventional method of creating these half tones, but it's quick and it works so well for me. So I'm just going to keep going with it. Yeah, and also I can see that you created another layer and you locked the one that we previously were working on with your lines. And yeah. now you are in a halftone area. So important to label your layers. Um, lead by example. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, lead by example. Because sometimes lead by example. We don't. <laughs> I don't. <Yeah. laughs> um, so from here, with... know... oh, I'm sorry, you go. No, that's all right. Um, I was going to talk about the the gray that I'm using here for these halftones that I create. 
um, the grays, you've got to pick a really nice gray. If it's a really dark black, the halftones are going to be like really thick and heavy, but I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Love to hear what Hannah has to say. Oh, yeah. So um, uh, Neil says, uh, Chrissy, you mind telling me which Wacom model you're using? Uh, this is the Wacom. I could be saying it wrong. Maybe I'm saying it wrong. Oh, I, I, um, I, I've had, I got my first Wacom in, I think, freshman year of high school, and I still don't know if it's Wacom or Wacom or whatever. It's been like <laughs> what over really a decade like? of me. <laughs> Just trying well, this to is, that out. This is the medium Intuos, I think, if that's Intuos, how you say yeah. it. Yeah. And the Intuos um, is my first one that I had. I love my Intuos. Yeah, it's good, eh? It's a, it's a good, um, I think I've been through like two of these now. Uh, my cat is chewing the cord, so it's <laughs> becoming a bit rusty. <laughs> That's exciting. Um, <laughs> Just living on the yeah, edge. Yeah, exactly. Um, so Marina we're starting says, to see our half tones, which is cool. Ooh, yeah. Wait, let's walk down. Let's 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 investigate how you just did that. Um, could you uh, sure. undo and redo that? Of course. Sure so from here, thing. you've got to make sure the the, the half tones that you want to create are like a gray color. I'm actually not sure if you could work with any other color, but this was the way that I learned it. So. Um, pick a gray color. The darker you go, the thicker your pantones are going to be, um, your half tones are going to be. We head up to uh, effect and then we went down to pixelate, color half tone. This is where we can change, you know, make adjustments to make the half tone what we'd like to see. Uh, the key thing with this is making sure all the channels are the same uh, number and keeping them quite high because I'm pretty sure the channels are the spacing between all the dots. Mm -hmm. Um, so you want to make sure those are all the same, quite high, and then click enter, and there you go. There's your Boom. half tone. It started anyway. But the thing there. with this is it's not a vector, so we can't at the moment change the color, adjust some if we wanted to. So the way that I turn it into a vector, I actually rasterize it. Um, this is probably the method that I'm not sure is the – most conventional method but it works for me so yeah i'm wondering if you could on. do an expand and if that would work also um if you just take yeah. a dot, expand a, a appearance if that would allow it I don't oh, know if we go back out. yeah and then go to uh, uh, object expand, expand appearance. appearance let's see if that works nah nah, nah. See. yeah see what i want to do is make them a vector so i have the like, yeah. ability to easily change colors and things like that um so by rasterizing it and then i'll image trace it from here Obviously, if you just click that, you're going to see nothing. But we just right. go into the image trace um, panel and I just change it to the high color. And you can start to see them form. And then you just expand it from there and then delete the background. Then you've got Boom. your half tone. Boom. Now you got them. You can change the color change and you colors. can adjust them. Or, yeah. You know, so I see you, know, you have some that are cut off there. Um, yeah. Which is like, like to have the that most... slice. Depends on the kind of drawing I'll do. Sometimes I'll go in and delete them and tidy them up a little bit. But for this type of style of illustration that I want to do, I want to make it like a little bit edgier and grungier. So I'm totally okay with, you know, things falling out of the lines because you'll see once we start to build it up, the color that I'm introduced isn't going to be like perfectly on our line work either. Yeah. Um, so it's quite a nice. I'm looking um, over on chat yeah. for a little bit. Uh, Norena says, is using different social media is a good way to show passion products to get brands interested in you as a brand designer? You kind of spoke to that a little bit earlier, um, but the idea of like your, your Instagram and your TikTok and your Behance like all being different platforms, do you approach them all the same way, um, like posting the exact same thing, or do you kind of personalize it for each platform? Yeah, so with my TikTok, I actually repurpose all the videos from there onto Instagram Reels. Actually, I, I'll correct that. Not all of them, because I think TikTok's a lot more sort of versatile. You can throw in like anything, any quick video, um, and people will engage with it. But TikTok's um, Instagram is a little bit more curated, so you want your feed and whatever you have on Instagram to be a little bit more, um, you know, you've had a bit more thought into it. You want to post certain videos that mean something, give value. Um, and then, yeah, with my reels, I really try and keep them that like tutorial based or showcase my work, but I do highly recommend using all, uh, any social media platforms to showcase work. But in saying that, don't spread yourself too thin and try and do it all because it's going to be so hard. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many 
different platforms out there and you've just got to find what works for you. Um, and also remaining engaged with the communities that you're doing. You're not just posting and ghosting and heading out because so much of it is also like seeing the comments and making sure that, you know, you're not that you're actually showing up. You're not just like, you know, sending an email to yeah. whatever. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, Voodoo Val says it's Wacom, not Wacom, but I used the oh. later pronunciation for a long time. So the more it could be know. my New Zealand accent is butchering it. <laughs> so, oh, I think she was also just like correcting the way I do it because I, I feel like I always say Wacom. Um, <laughs> But it's 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 a constant thing. There's been a few really things is. that we've talked about this week about um, like artist uh, misconceptions. And I know that we were talking about uh, Starry, Starry Night last night. And uh, we were talking about how the thing in the front is not a castle. It's a tree. So. Oh, really? <laughs> Learning lots knowing. of things. <laughs> I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, right. See, it's a thing. Um, so. I'm Roll going in you can and create a dot time. pattern in vectors inside Illustrator uh, or put a half tone tiff inside a vector mask. Oh, those are all good ideas as well. That's the cool thing yeah. about Illustrator. There's like a thousand ways to do the same thing. Um, exactly. So many different ways. And which I really like, you know, and as a designer, especially when you're learning, don't be put off if people tell you that's not the right way uh, because there's so many different ways to do things. And I'm so here for exploring those new ideas, new ways, what works for you, all the above. <laughs> Um, so we're creating our cool little cow print print now. Okay, well, cow print. And you're just kind of freehanding this based off of what you already uh, have, like off to the side, right? Yeah, like I'm I, I, normally I'd go and reference it if I was getting a bit lost. Yeah, reference but it's a cow print. You can't really go wrong. Exactly, you can't go wrong with a cow print. Um, Depending on the type of illustration too, I might use the pen tool, which is what I'm doing now, or I'll brush. I'll use the um, brush to draw things on um depending on if i want like a more not so structured look in the lines um that's kind of a different no. way of looking at it here's a here's a mm -hmm. uh, i didn't even plan this but now that you're working on this i'm like starting to think of it have you ever heard of um have you ever heard of kara sykes before no she is um another um artist here on behance she's done a few adobe lives but um, you can see she does a lot of she's down in Texas with her wife and um, cool. she does lots of really cute illustrations, but she also has a really strong presence of cowboy boots and <gasps> um, uh, making cute little illustrations that are a little bit reminiscent. She's got a little half tone here, just like you. Um, I feel like you guys would connect a lot. So, oh, yeah, Check definitely gonna give her a follow for sure. <laughs> Love that it inspo accounts. Yeah, right. Um, um, yeah. Have you have you met or found other really interesting people through your kind of journey through social media and design? Definitely. And I think with social media, as a creative, we're so inspired by not just like artists and illustrators. I'm inspired by like, um, you know, people who create podcasts and people who act and dance. Like I'm so inspired by so many other creatives i guess um so it's really cool being able to follow a lot of those as well and even for like content creation and how you can present your creative work to the world um there's lots of different cool stuff out there um 100 oh, um and it's cool to kind of also see like as as static visual creators i mean i am i'm a motion designer so like i'm a little bit um different but the even with motion design as funny as it sounds it's still strange of like the video content really becoming the zeitgeist of um the social platform right now like you know instagram yeah. trying to become a video platform and it's really inspiring and interesting to see you kind of find a way to take static content and add it into the video form um and the video landscape and and, and juggle that constant change of social media yeah, that's an interesting um, uh, thought, I guess, that I've never thought about. Like, we are sort of making static images into moving content. So you've kind would, of you ever identify, would you ever identify as a video creator uh, prior to Pink Pony Creative? Ooh, no, definitely not. I've always been, like, I've always had a huge interest in, like, film. And I think if I wasn't doing design, I'd love to be in film behind the camera. Um, mm -hmm. Don't know what it would be, but... I definitely have an interest in that um so oh, so good yeah um i love the combination of shadow with the halftone and shadow with the color like and that they're yeah. not the same thing that they have I've, different levels of intensity 
Yeah, and I, I was even thinking, I love how like that shadow kind of is not perfectly in line with the um, the half tone, half tone. So I might do the same exactly. thing along here. Um, just to create some cool kind of look. It's already it's looking great. Look yeah, a bit of fun. Would you buy this hat? Oh, for sure. I have a light up cowboy hat that's pink. So you do. Well, now <laughs> do. I'm disappointed you didn't wear it for today's show. I so should I have not worn even it. Know that. <laughs> <laughs> it is so epic. I I've worn it a couple of times to like in music festivals, and I get a lot mm -hmm. of com uh, compliments on it. So that's it's great. I basically bought it for Pink Pony. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's great, especially with your like neon sign and what have you. You can definitely oh, um, it's really lean into having creative things. <laughs> um, I saw that. I think Steve was saying, maybe it was Steve or Mike, were saying that the horseshoe is upside down. But how can a horseshoe be upside down? It's it's a shoe. Is it unlucky if the horseshoe's like that? Maybe if it's upside down the other way. I'm learning a lot of things are unlucky. Like I, I recently learned... Um, a new superstition. Apparently, white lighters apparently are really unlucky, but I did Ooh. not know that. So Ooh, I'm not very superstitious. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe upside down horseshoes are, are unlucky. I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe they are. As someone who, uh, this is why I call my business uh, Pink Pony. I was a horse rider for many years. I um, and I owned quite a few horses. I can confirm that that's the way the shoe goes on a horse. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever have to put a, a, a horseshoe on a horse, or is that kind of like something? No. You yeah, definitely bring someone else to do that. I'd be at. Uh, they like nail it in, right? Like they like nail it oh, into yeah. the hook. Yeah, definitely. It's quite. Um, it looks ruthless, but it's just like a fingernail. So. Yeah, it's like a fingernail. They don't. They're not in pain or anything, and it's it's nah, good for them. definitely not. Right? Yeah. Definitely. So you know, today we're learning about design and also ponies. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just I my my brain. No, I love all, it. All, all I love it. On these shows. I'm here for the I'm here for the chats. Here for the arms. But, uh, so then now you're just also approaching another thing. Are you going to be doing a uh, half tone on this one as well? Or are you probably stick yeah. to just the colors? Um, I reckon we'll go like this is what I'm intending on this to be a half tone. Um, mm -hmm. Unless this could be the shadowing. So we could drop it down to color and even um, add that pink. To it, oh, which I, I see. Think it's really cool. Yeah. I also like the asymmetry um, of it. Um, the idea that it could easily yeah. be symmetrical, but it, it feels more realistic because it has that those subtle differences. Yeah. I like this guy. He's he's a bit edgy. He's a bit cool. I so when I'm you're designing do a brand, do you yeah. first design like the icon library that you would have, or do you sometimes mm. start with type and then go into visual assets? Um, where do you kind of begin? I... Is it always the same? Yeah, I depending on how I feel, like I said earlier, it's kind of like this. Sometimes I can literally see what I'm going to design before I start designing it. So it's kind of like magic. Like I can just get straight into it and go for it and I can create something. <laughs> but um, I usually start to, I just like, if we've got a name of a brand, so to say for this one, I've called it, it's got a quite cute name, the Coded Dixie. I thought that was very country. <laughs> um, <laughs> so as an example, you know, if I was going to create a logo for the Coded Dixie, maybe I would bring these um this font and i'd start to just explore like a whole lot of different type and i'd literally just like um punch them out um and showcase like all these different styles of type and then from there take the ones i like and then maybe i start to design the illustrations and the patterns because that's something pink pony is kind of well known for it's my style um and i kind of do it all at the same time because i think that your designs for your colors, your patterns, your typography, your logo can all influence each other. And it might, you know, you want it to all work so well together. So being able to design it at the same time um, as you go allows that. Um, and it gives you more so flexibility, which is kind of nice. Because then yeah. you have the, the space to be creative. Exactly, exactly. And you can try different things and... Um, Let's put the half tone on this guy. Okay. All right. So we're about an hour into our stream. Um, I'm going to let you keep working on this uh, and we'll check it back in with you in just a minute. But I want to take time for a little health check. Uh, Anna is even in the chat so she can um, help us out here. But um, Jess also right before we did that says that the horseshoe is open at the top. The luck falls in and remains. Uh, and so I guess that's where that superstition comes from. 
Uh, but with no further ado, we're going to take a break real quick to do monkey paws. <laughs> All right, guys. So Christy's in her corner. She's working on her thing. Uh, we are going to do a quick break to do Monkey Paws, which is brought to us, uh, or at least taught to me uh, by Anna Davis Court. I think she might have even gotten it from someone else. Um, but basically, it is a really cool exercise to do um, every so often, especially when you're working. And so if you're watching, you should um, take a quick break to do this for us. Um, and uh, I'll even... Christy doesn't have to do it. I'm going to bring her back up, though, just so she's on screen. Um, but uh, it's a really easy way to do some stretching. Um, and it helps against the <laughs> tunnel because it is uh, obviously a detriment to our industry. Uh, I remember, especially in college, like um, people were uh, trying to do finals and trying to power through stuff. And they got carpal tunnel. And then they had to show up to class with an unfinished product. And yikes. Uh, not helpful with clients either. But what you're going to do is you're going to reach forward and put your palms out like this. Uh, and then you're going to bring them in and go, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, uh, like monkey paws. And you'll feel it. You hold that for a second. Also, this is a great showcase of Christy's ooh. nails. We were talking about it right before we went live. Thank Look you. <laughs> pretty. Um, I love that. So, ooh, ah, ah. Then we're going to go oh, down nice. like this and then bring them in again. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. You can probably feel this one a little bit more. <laughs> um, and you'll feel it in your tendons. And then I don't stretch enough. Your hands oh. Over. Like this, and bring it in one more time. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. Ooh. And then the last one, which is the one that always hurts me the most. If it hurts, you should stop. But the last one is you bring it towards yourself, and then ooh, ah, ah. And you make a <laughs> funky little face, ooh. and you hold it and you shake it up. And you can do this a few times, um, as many times as you want, <laughs> uh, to really make it feel a little bit more limber. You, like I said, you don't want to overextend yourself. Um, so I normally just like do it real quick again where I just will flip through them. Um, the thumb is what really gets me every time. Oh, I always yeah. feel the thumb. Um, Feels good. But I am quite habit afraid as a designer to get right? carpal tunnel. Oh, scary. I don't want to get yeah, that. Yeah, right? Like it, and it's, it's shooting. I, I got it. Uh, uh, not, I didn't get it fully, but I, I had like a, kind of signs of it about um, – like three or four weeks ago when I was working really hard on a project and it's so it's quickly debilitating where you're like, I can't do any more. <laughs> yeah. my, my whole arm work hurts. Um, so not good. Yeah, you do. Um, Abdu King cool. says, uh, what am I watching? You're watching health, <laughs> but you're watching. Um, you are. Good Interactive dad. content. <laughs> and it says we pass it down to generations, the tradition of monkey paws. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, you have to take your watch off. I don't have to take my watch off, but apparently, um, I forget who it was. Somebody said they popped their watch. I think it was Rob said he popped his watch off accidentally last stream when we were doing Ooh. our uh -uhs. Yeah, there he is. He said the last time we did the monkey paw stretches, I popped my watch off. That's a strong <laughs> forearm, is what that is. It really is. I want them big forearms. <laughs> <laughs> um, Oh, uh, Steve says, I spar with Chuck Norris and spend the next six months in hospital doing art form from the ICU. But that's on brand because Chuck Norris is very cowboy boots. Very, there you go. Uh, cowboy exactly. Hats. Good. Um, is this your this own is... cowboy boot? Yeah, I was going to say, this is my, I, so I took a photo of this. I should have bought, bought it here today. I mm -hmm. took a photo of this uh, as a reference point and then imported it into Illustrator to um, use it as a bit of a... Um, reference i just kind of go through and outline it a bit this can really help with scale so you know things like this i'll take a photo or and then i'll put it into um illustrator to get the get the reference um scaling on point that's Sometimes that's, that's the using your resources to work smarter not harder which is you know yeah exactly um uh, Raul also says it. to stretch the neck as well which is also very important and Megan mm -hmm. asks, what mm -hmm. platform do you use to create your email marketing templates for clients? Oh, I actually don't do a heck of a lot of email templates for clients. Um, I've done it in the past, not with Pink Pony. Um, and I used MailChimp. Um, but I will, yeah, that was to create like the emails. But if I need to create any assets, I'll usually do it in either InDesign or Illustrator, depending on what I'm creating. Um, but yeah. I actually yeah, don't do a heck of a lot. A heck of a lot of it with Pink Pony. 
I'm learning actually a lot. Of, I don't know if it's still the case, but during COVID, um, mm. there was a huge influx and popularity in email chains and marketing, which is kind of like reverse. It's kind of like how we go back to records. Um, yeah. For music. It's like go back to email for how we absorb content. And I know that like Twitter has a, a, a form where you can now sign up for things on people's letters. There's um, a whole thing that's kind of like patreon um but it's just fully oh, for wow. email marketing and i forget which one it is and you can set up your own newsletter um and then of course you know there's always mailchimp and there's things where you can build your list by your own but i think even um, Flowdisk. yeah Flowdisk apparently is really good it's pretty amazing i am i've only mm -hmm. delved into it a little bit but um mm -hmm. could be another one to look at if you are uh, trying to find one it's just amazing um, like there's so many successful and productive ways to um, grow your business or to mm -hmm. keep people interested, but they're not always the same and they're not always like codependently important. Like you can still have a very successful business without having any sort of email thing. Yeah. You can also really grow your business with email. It's, you know, it's one of those things that's constantly learning to adapt. Because like you said, we don't want to stretch ourselves thin with um, having too much to keep up with. So. Yeah, I've actually, I haven't um, got like an email, like a newsletter or anything for Pink Pony, something I mm -hmm. would like to do, but one does Takes not have time. enough time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's when you got to, you got to hire more people. I know you said you got two and you're, you're not sure about how Pink Pony is going to grow over the next few years. I mean, that's always something to keep in mind. So. Exactly. Oh, this is looking cute. Looks so good. That's amazing how quickly you were able to throw that out too. Like that just goes to show you that you've been working with the pencil for a while. Yeah, I love the pen tool. It takes a while to get used to it, but once you once you do, it's like ah, yes, it's got it. Substack, <laughs> that's the one. That's the one I was thinking. There that's you like go. Newsletters. It's Substack. Um, but that that has grown a lot in the past. Now, um, here is an interesting uh, exploration into how do you determine what information and details are important to include uh, when you're creating something with a little bit more detail like this next to the cowboy hat. Well, I think it's really important to remember that scale is a good thing. Remember, <laughs> um, like depending on how big your illustrations are going to be or your pattern or detail, like, you know, you want to make sure the detail is not going to be overdone. So this was kind of the original. I've just drawn it out, see what it looked like. But when I start to bring it in with the other drawings, maybe it is too detailed. Maybe I'll remove some stuff. So even dropping down um certain lines uh just to make it that much less detailed i guess um right i, I think i'll even right bring in the cow print into the boot maybe at the bottom or something Ooh, that would be cool or even through here kind of cool yeah yeah. Uh, Megan clarifies. She says, I was asking because I saw the work you did for Lavio on your Instagram and was wondering what you used. Ah, yes, yes. Um, then I use, I actually did those templates in Adobe X, XD. It is amazing. I actually haven't done it for a while. Um, but that platform is incredible for email templates and also web wireframes. It is, it's almost like Illustrator, but simplified. Um, yeah. Have you used and it kind before? of mixed with InDesign a little bit and Illustrator, right? Yeah, like, like a, a Mary and a little bit of Photoshop. Um, and you can just export those graphics that you make in there as JPEGs or PNGs and um, get them up on on the web. Yeah, no, it's incredible. The um, the fan base behind um, XD is is loud and proud, and as it should mm. be. I, I have not yeah. yet gone into it. Is one of the Adobe programs that I am not confident in. I, I don't think I've ever opened it. Um, but because that's just not my my wheelhouse. But the people yeah. that use it can do really incredible things that I didn't even realize mm. were possible um, in, yeah. in, in products, which is cool. So it's cool I to see that you can... used it for client work. Yeah, can you even um, like upload a whole website sort of? <laughs> I think I've heard yeah, some, somehow, but yeah. Um, Megan says, thank you for uh, answering the question. She appreciates it. So, nice. Yeah, if you guys have any questions for um, Christy as we're kind of working through stuff, please feel free to throw it in the Behance chat. If you're ever on YouTube, please hop on over to uh, Behance, and so you can uh, you can come hang out and, and be part of the community with uh, Mike and Abdu and Megan. 
um, are having a good old time Woo-hoo. here. Jack's in there saying, I love XD. And I know that about Jack because Jack is uh, <laughs> an XD superhero. Um, uh, so if you ever want to learn more about XD, make sure you watch Jack's streams. Um, and she normally streams on the weekends. So check her stuff out. Speaking of which, of other streams, uh, this week, uh, today and tomorrow right now, uh, this is the uh, last Adobe new live content for the day with Christy. We're going until 2 o'clock, so we have uh, a little under an hour left, uh, and we're just going to be walking through this. But tomorrow is a packed day with the Adobe Fonts show, uh, a guest Swoop Nebula, Annika Garwal, and Claddy Virgin, uh, all having separate live shows with new content tomorrow. Uh, and that's all in Western time. So make sure you check those out. On Thursday, we have Let's Go Fresco. Let's Go Fresco with Kyle T. Webster. Thursday mornings at 7.30, only on Adobe Live. And then as far as the font show, um, they have that with Ari and Ben, and they're combining type and images. I believe they will be going over a little bit of 36 Days of Type which um, actually is a perfect transition for us um, as we continue to work to go over uh, the letter of the day. So let's check that out. Today's brought to you by the letter P. P, P. So Trente says uh, they were the ones that organized the original um, 36 days of type. So I just want to make sure that uh, we do right by them and bringing them up. But um, this is unaffiliated with them officially. All I did was go and use their scheduling of sorts. Um, also, Christy, feel free to contribute to talk about these or continue to working on your brand, whichever works best for your time. Like I said, we have about um, an hour left and uh, we'll also be going through a feature on Martin. Um, and then I also want to fit some time in to uh, talk about Florence because I know you want to talk about her too. So um whichever works best for you. But I just went ahead and I've been building these like at like midnight. So a lot of these guys are the eager beavers that want to post the letter of the day at midnight. So um, crazy people. So fine with me. Um, <laughs> uh with that said if you guys know of really great letters as we go over these or if you're doing them yourselves please send them to me. Um, poor voodoo I forgot to send you all of the things again. Um, if you like, I can also just like copy and paste them in as I go. It's up to you. Whatever works for you. We'll see. But the first one is from J. Anthony Nathan. We looked at his one yesterday. If you guys remember uh, with the O. And I think it's so beautiful. It's brutal. It's uh, like brutalist. It's also um, very dainty. Um, I love it. I love the um, like shine on the top of yes. the piece there. Yeah. And on the I'm bottom one. I'm looking at it though. Too. And I can see a person's face. I don't know if you can see it. And he's got like a little smile on the side. With a little oh, eye. yeah. He's like leaning to the side a little bit. Yeah. He looks like a little but Elvis. The intentional. big thing is his hair down too. <laughs> yeah. It really funny. does. But it's so beautiful. Exactly. And I think it's successful. I think I can see a P very easily. Um, Definitely. A few of these I have included. Um, and I, I we can comment on whether or not we think they're successful or not. It's another one I think is successful. Um, and it's a cool exploration of like collage and 3D. Um, yeah. And the noise. I like the noise and a half tone uh kind of vibe that we have going there very um, geometrical and, very and with geometric. the like line through it yeah um but it's to the 3d because it's actually going through the middle of the p i think from what i yeah can see. no i think so too <laughs> um and uh it's also cool kind of like the perspective is a little warped as well and being able to mm-hmm. um like it, it feels a little bit askew and crazy um but uh it's got a, but, it's yeah. feels moody which i like and so that's like by a... Cl- Clemens Maurer. Um, next, we have Martin mm-hmm. Nauman, who is actually the um, artist of the day that I have for the feature, which um, is really cool. And he has his chromatic uh, P. Mm-hmm. This one is um, a, a little bit more abstract in the idea that, like, with context, I could see it as being a P. Um, he does a really cool exploration of shapes and, and space to really push the letters as far as they go. Um, and I think this one's cool. I really like how the red is um, always popping up on the bottom as if there was something mm. red in the bottom left and only on the edges that kind of show this chromatic side um, pop up, which is really nice. Yeah, this is amazing. Sorry, I have a siren next to me, so I'm going to be quiet for a second. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> this looks epic. 
I don't know if you guys can um, hear Ryan, but I can definitely hear me. But I'm loving the textures in the background of this one. It's really nice, especially with the like tilted, it almost looks like that, um, the spheres on the edge of the cube kind of tilting and hovering over, which is really cool. Yeah, no, it's um, <laughs> it's very um, like retro futurist to me. Mm. Like it feels like um, the Jetsons or it feels like, um, I don't know. It just feels For like sure. 80s future kind of. Um, and yeah, it's so abstract uh, that once again, like I, I think I would need context to know it's a P, but I think that yeah. it's brave. And I, I, I included both because uh, Shamil actually made the white one the main default one and i thought that oh, okay. uh, i actually kind of liked the reverse one that was like the second in the series so I switched yeah. it. um I really this do. is annika Ooh. agarwal who is in the chat cool. her whole thing is penguins um i love so the that entire letters penguins are so cute and some letters are way easier than others to turn into penguins um make sure you guys check out her this Instagram. is really cool got really cool ones um and same it sort of almost, thing, like it could be flipped. Yeah, the, the head of the penguin there looks, it could be reverse, so you can mm -hmm. see it curving over, but he could also be standing, which I kind of like. I don't know if you can yeah. see that as well. Yeah. It's cute. That's really, that's amazing. Um, <laughs> Steve says you're right, is here. Thank you. Yeah, I know. I got sirens all on the <laughs> down the street all the time. Um, this one is by Nicholas, and uh, it reminds me of Bananas in Pajamas. Or bananas. It reminds me of a tie. Oh, or a tie. Yeah, that's good. Like, yeah, like a striped tie. And it almost yeah. looks like the fabric kind of like curling around. This Rushing is really around. cool. I love the colors through this. And also the shading underneath the mm. horizontal portion of the P here um, is really cool because it's very subtle and noisy, but it's there to give you depth. Um, they have this one by Maria. She's doing a bunch of different ones that's that are cool. kind of based in fake uh, machinery. Um, and that's all on her channel. Um, wow. and very, this very is simple. Nice grain. Mm -hmm. So cool. Um, this is by Mariska, Mary Jane Studios. And this one is another one that feels very retro to me, but even a little bit older. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I don't know how I feel about the dots that kind of feel like a rash to me. Um, yeah, but I do enjoy the I zebras. And with the zebra, it's nice to have another element outside of just the zebra. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I do like the added um, textures and the um, patterns in there. It's quite yeah. interesting. Even the texture to the black is cool. That looks kind of like mm -hmm. there's like dust on my screen or something. Um, but I always, I always like a good texture. This one is oh, one I that like I included. Those. It's beautiful, but I don't know if it's successful because it is. I really wanted to include it because if you go to Anton's page, all of the letter forms are so like bold in the idea of really pushing the boundary mm. as to what a letter form is and some are way more identifiable than others i think this one might be a little too close to a y um yeah. whereas like you kind of lose the concept of a p i think he could maybe in, improve it by maybe increasing the circle that's there on the mm. right um and growing it to have yeah. a little bit more of a loop but I, I also just really admire the abstraction and experimentation of this one Definitely. Even if the bit on the left side was like a little bit smaller, mm -hmm. um, it might have kind of tilted it so that it's the, the big P is the main uh, sort of symbol and roundness through it. Yeah, it They're holds cool, the They're very it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, This one's Alex Birch. Uh, Annika helped me find this one. And it's like a Lego feel mixed with like an 80s feel. Um, I could feel some Back to the Future vibes with this. Uh, mm -hmm. And I also just really like the pulsating out of it. Um, I like they almost look like little faces again in the the radios there if it's a radio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like can little, I keep like, seeing these faces. Stuff. No, I mean yeah. I, I like it, it's natural and it's a uh, something with the human to be able to see mm -hmm. a lot of um, different faces in different stuff. Um, also, oh wait, Anthony, sorry, I missed your uh, message earlier, but it reminds me of Taffy. I think you were talking about the um, uh, this one that is very Taffy like. It looks like it can really mm -hmm. pull it, and mend it. Um, which is, is great. Um, this one um, is reminds me almost like a Burton snowboards or uh, like a Bauhaus kind of scenario. I think mm. this one's extremely successful. I can automatically tell it's a P. Very simple, yeah. but at the same time, very bold. Um, mm. Like how it cuts from the outside. I would, I'd really want to see more letters in this style. Uh, and Tim has a bunch of yeah, really cool stuff epic. Yeah, I really like that one. Um, 
And then this is the very last one that I have. Uh, and like I said, there are so many online. I just get these really late at night. So these are a lot of the eager people. If you guys have anyone you want to share, please let me know. Um, and I also can keep uh, an eye out for them in the future for the next two days because we will be having this segment on the next two days. Um, but this by Harith Harithik. And I think this is built in 3D program. I'm like 99% yeah, sure. Um, but you can also kind of achieve stuff like this also in Illustrator, which is cool um, with the new yeah. 3D tools. So. I like how it's like it's not actually direct the mm -hmm. view of it. We've got it on a different angle, which is really cool. And I think this one's successful. I think I can really tell this mm. one's a P. I mean, that's not necessarily something I would expect. It'd also be cool to see this one animated with like maybe like ticking or something. Yeah. Um, kind of reminds me of the I Spy books. But Ooh, anyway. Yeah. I love all the references. <laughs> yeah. I know, right? It reminds us of. And then real quick, we're going to do a feature on Martin and then we'll come back um, and we can talk a little bit. Uh, we can look a little bit more at the branding with you, Christy, and then we can then hop into Art Talk to kind of close things out. So here we go. We'll be right back. Sounds great. Hey, I'm Martin Norman, graphic designer and digital artist. I'm based in Dessau, Germany, and I'm specialized on abstract generative art. Uh, this is my fifth year doing uh, 36 Days of Type. When I approach the, the concept of the year or the, the current year, I don't really have a concept or something uh, I want to do. Mostly it's about abstract type so i'm enjoying to play with the different type forms and don't have any borders or limits with that and for the, the visual effects i'm working very experimental and just playing around uh, until i came to a result i liked or like a, a script i like and then i keep developing the script and trying to move it in a new way uh, so it looks like something I haven't seen before. I'm working mostly just digital, so I'm not working with a lot of drafts or uh, sketches. And I think I trained it over the years to just work uh, with the mouse and uh, the computer. And most of the times I just started with a really big um, artboard in Illustrator. Just starting with black and white shapes and letter shapes. I'm working mostly grid based, creating just a base shape and then playing with the proportions and the details of each letter, just having fun exploring the, the abstract shapes and just playing around a lot. Sometimes the whole artboard is filled with uh, letter shapes. Part of my work is mostly based in Filterforge. It's like a procedural texture program. Then I pick what works best with the effects. I think I'm learning every time I create something or like working on a new technique. I think I always learn something about it. But this year, I definitely learned how to make this Chrome thing on a new level somehow because I know how to incorporate any shape I want now and put it on a ladder. So far, I think I like the A and the B most, but I'm still working on the whole series, so it might change. Since last year, I'm also active on Foundation, the NFT platform, publishing there and then some NFTs or collections. Uh, the recent NFT series I published was called Polaris, and it's an abstract series, an abstract NFT collection. There's still some pieces available, and I will update it in a few weeks. I'm gonna animate the Polaris series. In general, I'm more working with animated pieces at the moment because I want to learn new uh, techniques and the work I already have it to a new level. I'm still working on my Domestica course. It's about the animation of procedural generated graphics and how to work with um, abstract typography, talking about how to enhance your, your type works with uh, animations made in After Effects and using procedural and generative uh, techniques. Uh, you can follow me mainly on Instagram and Behance. These are the most active uh, social media networks I'm using at the moment. I'm working the most of the time as a freelancer, so independently, I'm available. All right, so that's Martin. Uh, extremely talented, love his work. Like I was saying earlier, with this as a platform, I have been really lucky to be able to reach out to people that I think are really cool and uh, just kind of pick their ear about it uh, or pick their brain and uh, not pick their ear. <laughs> All right, I'm going to bring Chrissy back in because I'm not doing well on my own. Uh, welcome back. Hello. I liked that little segment. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, really nice guy, super talented. Um, I wanted to include as much stuff uh, for his promo as possible because he's really, that guy cranks out work like nobody's business. When I was pulling the um, letters for, like last um, last year's 36 day type, he works and creates something like every single. I don't know how he does it. Um, Crazy. Like, His Chrome was amazing. Right. I'd love to Crazy. see how he does that. Yeah, that was so incredible. Especially you can see it like getting even better through the years. Yeah, and like just getting a little bit more understanding of how to make it add to um, 
I don't know, the forms of the shape and really mm -hmm. give the idea of 3D because it's not in the 3D program. Um, yeah. It's just like textures that's added on top, added on top of it. So incredible. Um, how's your how's your incredible. stuff going? How are we looking? It's going well, going great. Yeah. So we're looking really good coming together. Oh. I just worked on a little bit in the background. Yeah, it's looking really looking good. Damn cute. I would like a pair of these and the hat too. Right. So <laughs> that'd with, be with, nice. with the together get up. I'm upset that you didn't wear your light up hat and you didn't wear your boots today. So like that's zero actually. for two, but you know what? You're doing okay. So we'll we'll let it pass. <laughs> We're doing okay. I love this uh, till as well. Um just the direct selection, but the lasso. I yes. often forget about it, but it can just be it such just a slept quick on way, way to too much. Don't sleep on the lasso it. tool, guys. It is a wonderful Amazing. tool. Um, I also oh, use isolation mode a lot and the control Y mode a lot when I'm um, trying to figure out like how to select stuff. Yeah. So Which isolation mode is something that used to be a pain to me. And then once I learned how to use it, then I was like, oh, okay, now I get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the pen tool. Definitely feel that with the pen tool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I love the details. Speaking of different tools and stuff, do you want to go over um, a few tips and tricks? Yeah, I'd love to. So my, right. a couple of my favorite tools would definitely be um, using, when using the pen tool, you can um, adjust the width so easily using the width tool. I don't know how many people knows it, know this tool. I only found out about this like, like last year. It's pretty crazy. So you can Which adjust is things perfect like, for this. What? what? I didn't know that was there. Which is always liberating and also so frustrating to know that something has been there for a very long time and uh, you're just taking advantage of it now. But this one lets you create a regular stroke and then you can mm. modify the actual space in certain um, anchor points, right? It's pretty amazing, yeah. And even if you, know, you want to tailor off a point, make it a little bit sharper, you can do that using this tool. And then even adjusting it so maybe we want that to follow down there a bit more. Or maybe even closer. Um, it's so adjustable, uh, which is really nice. Oh, it looks like a little leaf. Um, yeah, it looks like a little leaf or like a like a ingrown hair. Ooh. <laughs> an ingrown <laughs> hair. It does look like an ingrown hair. Um, but my real, I didn't know that was there, was is a great tool. Not many people know about this, I think. Um, this works really well with like packaging design or if you're creating business cards or something in Illustrator, is turning any shape into a guide did you know you can do this i did not know i could do this all right so we got a circle now wait how'd yeah, you just so, do that so quickly so quickly so that's that's turned into a guide so say uh we wanted to create a square just say this is a business card and we wanted to make like a um guide around it so we don't bleed out into the edges you can easily if we've got a square we'll just make another one you know, this is what this is where I want my guide. If you click Command Five, it turns it into Command a guide. Five. Yeah, Command Five, or you can just do it through View down to Guides and click Make Guides there. But obviously, it's already a guide. You can actually even release it, so turn it back into a normal shape. Um, no way. I know. <laughs> That's nuts. <laughs> it's actually an epic tool, and I had no idea about it until a few months ago. Like you can do it with anything, even just if That's I was amazing. Could you do it with a cowboy hat if you wanted to? Oh, I'll I'll see. But like same again, star, turn it into guide. Done. Have a look. Uh, I don't know why you'd want to do it with a cowboy hat, but is it is it even possible? Hey, is it, it might possible? Like it's too many shapes. <gasps> it's possible. <laughs> wow. So you can see oh. the guide there. Hopefully, you guys could all God, see that on me. your screen. <laughs> we could even reverse it. Yeah, the reverse thing is also game changing. Release the guides. fact that you can release the guides. Wow. Amazing. Wow, that, that is there? great. And you <laughs> yeah. said uh, Command 5, which I guess would probably be Control 5 for me. Um, yeah, Command 5 is the shortcut for it, but easy to find wow. under View Guides just there. So, do you find yourself using great that tool. a lot for certain like approaches? Like, when do you feel like you yeah. use that most? Especially in packaging design, if I want to make sure my margins are right and I'm aligning really nicely, you know, you can use these guides um, on the side here. But sometimes you want to uh, make them a little bit more complex. 
even for aligning, you know, aligning things. Like I said, it's yeah, it's mm-hmm. a great tool for packaging. So I highly recommend it. Wouldn't really necessarily use it in branding, but um, a good one to know. It's good to know it's just there. I'm surprised with the tools that I use sometimes. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> now would you ever um approach different um like variants of lines here with this uh, horseshoe like the inside of the horseshoe here i feel like it's getting a little lost with that internal um outline would you ever bring that down or do you think Definitely. that would throw too much diversity into your like your well language? yeah and the thing with designs like this i'd want to make sure that when we start to finalize everything and bring them all together, maybe, you know, if we're going to drop those lines, maybe it means we drop a few other lines down. Um, Mm -hmm. Depending on what it was, you could even do, look at doing these lines in here um, just to making sure they're all like consistent um, and the detail looks really good across the board. Cause I think if we kept it, you know, if we had our whole pattern and a nice thick stroke, and then this was the only illustration with those strokes, it could look a little off. So it's nice to make sure we're including the same things um, and same details through the illustrations. But this definitely works better. It was getting very lost before. Yeah, I think that really speaks true, like to your your attention to detail for that. I think that something Mm. that you really um, strong in in your own personal branding um, is your cohesiveness. And the idea that something that I've always admired about your work is that within the first few seconds of a reel, um, even if your face is there or not, I feel like you put your face there mm-hmm. a lot and then I can tell it's you because obviously it's you. Um, but <laughs> for a lot of times where it just begins um, or if I'm like scrolling and it starts somewhere else, like you have a very cohesive sense of approaching everything. And even if that's like your pink background or your pink modifiers, like I can see it and I'm like, oh, that's pink pony. Um, yeah. And the idea that you're even applying that to when you're um, creating these pieces, I think is really admirable oh thank you thank you very much i think it's so important to remember that like everything you do especially on social media can come across as a branded experience and it's a chance to get in front of someone new that hasn't seen your stuff before and even um it comes down to like my pink pink pony sign now i put that in my front of my video so people know it's me straight off the bat um even using my face it's a great way to make sure people don't steal your stuff (laughs) yeah they could cut it out but Perfect, but it takes more you know? work and it's way more intentional exactly. too. You're like, you had to take the time to cut my face out. So thank you for it feels more not even being like a, you can't even be like, oops, I accidentally stole it. Like, no, you you consciously stole my work. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. Um, um, it's I kind of like, do you remember in like 2006, 2007, uh, like every single like rap song started with like, like Jason Derulo or like Lady Gaga? Exactly. The same, the same, I guess it's the same again. thing. Yeah, <laughs> and your brain kind of switches over. As soon as you hear that, you're like, Jason Derulo. Jason Derulo. That's him. My man. <laughs> it's, it's funny to see him like adapt to how he says his name because he still says it in the beginning of his songs now, but it's not the same Jason Derulo. Like, he'll just not be like, quite the same. I'm like, oh, okay, cool, whatever. <laughs> At least we know. <laughs> yeah, we know it is. Um, Yitz wants to know if you ever work with the library and your artwork. Um, I know I talked a little about it earlier. Do you feel like you ever use that? It's okay. If not, to be honest, yeah, I actually don't. I It's something that I really want to get into using more. It's just a process yeah. that I just didn't start using. Um, but it is really great. Like if I was going from Illustrator and importing things to InDesign, amazing. You can yeah. sort of just quickly um, um What I recently it. just started incorporating it into mine is I took um, the Instagram logo, the Twitter logo, the TikTok logo, the YouTube logo, like all the ones that I could think of regularly, and I added them to a library. And so when I was actually making assets for Offset and I needed to like bring something in, I didn't have to go and search on my computer for files of saved EPSs or AIs. I could just go yeah. to the library and drag it over. So. So that's that, exactly that's where I need to new. get to. <laughs> yeah, I need to implement um, those uh, processes into my my, my strategies. It's looking really Voodoo cool. Val says, we, we, we the best music. <laughs> <laughs> that's a classic. That is a classic. It's the All right, of our I'm going to show. <laughs> I'm going to show a different. Um, additional technique that I can do with these so Mm -hmm. say I was really happy with how everything was looking and I wanted to add like another textured effect over them because you know that cowboy uh, style is kind of 
old, grungy, dirty. Um, so I wanted to add that here. We could add like a, a grain over it. And I usually use, I've got a couple of grains in my um, library of stuff. And this was just something, I think I bought these a long time ago and I've used them so much. So I'll take the grains here. Um, let's just put them over here for now. Um, and real quick, there's some people who are joining a little bit later in the stream, um, just because we have this here. Um, one, by the way, guys, this is Chrissy Campbell, Pink Pony Creative. Uh, but <laughs> we have a question from Anakit Powell, who says, how did you achieve that polka dot pattern? Um, could you just do the little halftone oh, yeah, thing? Sure, thing. sure. So with the halftones, uh, let's just do it in a circle. If you're creating a shape, make sure that shape, you're making it a grayscale. So some kind of black and white. I always stick with about this one here, like a nice light shade. Um, the darker you go, the thicker and more condensed the Pantone is going to be. So then we go up to Effect, Pixelate, Color half tone, and then adjusting these to adjust the radius to suit. So it might be a bit of a trial and error to get those right. So just keep going back and forth if you find that it's not quite right. Um, uh, and then from here, they're obviously a flat shape right now, so I can't actually change the color. We're just going to rasterize that and then image trace it, um, just bringing up those settings and then expanding it. Boom. And then you've got your, your dots in a row. Half tone. That's the one. So you can easily change the colors and things from there. Um, yeah. We also cool. had a few other suggestions in the chat earlier about how you can make like a pattern and bring in a pattern, like save it as pattern and then reuse it. Um, there's also ways of like, you know, expanding images that you live trace and what have you. So there's many different ways to get to the same effect. Um, this one seems very useful, especially for making shapes and creating um, spaces in their exact form. Um, but there's for many sure. different ways you can go. So anyway, back to your textures. I need to use oh, more textures in Illustrator. I normally bring them into Photoshop and everything's rasterized, which isn't as great as uh, obviously a vector texture. So um, yeah, I mean, it can get it can get a little complex, I think, because these vectors are quite detailed. Um, mm -hmm. So sometimes it can slow the Illustrator down, like no tomorrow. Um, so yeah. maybe I'll just cut some down a little bit. But what I'll do from here, if I wanted to add a texture to an object, once I was happy with it, I would group the object and I'd actually make a mask of it. Um, here we go, invert that. And then if we come and grab this texture, let's just, um, we'll just cut them out there. Click on here, click on the mask, and then adding the texture. You can see we're starting to add that um, grouping mask to the texture, uh, to the object, sorry, which makes, this epic vintagey feel uh, cowboy hat. And then, so That's where have I moved this cowboy hat? It'll actually change the color of the texture in there too. Whatever the background And it's cool because it's cool. also not a just like, it's not the it's not the the beige on top of it. It's a mask. So like when you move that off onto the white, you're not going to have all these weird like overflows of the beige because you're hiding it with like a overlay color. It's actually taking yeah. part of the image. It's nice. Yeah, exactly. The downside yeah. to this is it can slow down Illustrator quite a lot. There's probably a better mm -hmm. way of um, creating these vector grains, like in Photoshop. I don't know. You got that M1 chip it. now. M1 chip, baby. Can't slow you M1 down. M1 chip. <laughs> Give me that, <laughs> no please. No way. <laughs> <laughs> so this Not is looking by Apple. really cool. I just no, want an Apple. We do love it. <laughs> <laughs> do you work on a PC? I do now. I used to, uh, oh back when my, my agency bought my laptop, but I don't work for that agency anymore. So I lost my super like $7,000 laptop. <sighs> oh, <hurt>. dear. <laughs> but I love my tower. You know, I, if it were up to me, I'd have an expensive tower and an expensive Mac. Um, but obviously, mm. we're not there yet. You know, I'm not in my not 30s yet. yet. I got one more year <laughs> to make it to a million dollars. You know, we're just getting there. $999,999 short right now. So we're good. <laughs> Hey, same. Touche. <laughs> <laughs> uh, These are looking so cool. This, by the way, they think it's really cool. How you uh, make half tones in the in the uh, the pick. textures on top. Um, I think so it's a way that you can really elevate your art is by adding these textures and creating like more depth to them. Um, you know, without without all that, if I was to take away everything, 
they do become quite stripped back and simplified. So by adding like the color, the textures, the cowboy print, the half tone, we can just give it a bit of spark. I love. Also, Yitz is saying if you add a complex vector image to your library and then you use that, it won't slow down your computer. Also, when you add it to different projects, if you update it one place, it'll update it in all, all 100 other places you use it, which is also a good point. There you go. Uh, it's just cool. To Learning have. every day. I mean, that's, that's yeah. my beauty of live streaming. Half time, I'm like teaching things on on uh, stream. And then someone was like, you know, you can do it this way, right? And I'm like, yeah, it's just here to teach you that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. We're learning so much. And like yeah. these programs are so powerful. There's so many different ways to do things. Learn new that's stuff. Nice. I love that. Um, all right. And then we only have um, about like uh, 15 minutes left or so. So I want to spend some time. Um, I, I spoke to you a little bit about um, being able to talk a little bit about someone who inspires you for our uh, history moment. And so let's do a little bit of art mm -hmm. talk. So you brought up a UK artist and author um, that mm -hmm. is very um, active right now on uh, Instagram and also creating her own books. And her name is Florence Given. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about how you found her and why you chose to um, talk about her today? Sure. So I found her a few years ago. I think it was just on Instagram. She just popped up. Um, but her illustrations and she uses these what she does is basically create these illustrations puts them with put them with quotes um and she's so like empowering and not afraid to be herself and that's something I really admire from people and you can even see that come through in her illustration work because it's quite daring it's not necessarily pretty but she makes it beautiful in its own way and I love the like edge she uses her color is amazing I mean, she uses a lot of pink, pink. so of course I'm going to like it. So you're like, hey, wow, you got a great palette. <laughs> exactly. Love the palette. You know, even like her sunglasses on the girls, like the way she uses her overlays is just yeah, really, really epic. Yeah. It's really nice. So, um, so nice. I also and I just think really must, enjoy her allude type. to like the like um, beehives, 50s, 60s, almost like Baltimore maryland kind of vibe that i grew up kind of around um yeah and it's kind of cool to see that with a with a new twist on it um Definitely. feels very diva yeah, she's got some cool stuff. very diva love it here for it and now <laughs> she obviously it looks like she vectorizes these but i think she might vectorize it in a similar way that we were approaching the um things that we mm. were bringing in with the pizza box earlier it looks like kind of um yeah, she. I'm pretty sure on a reel she did. She sketches everything, so she draws it all out. There was a reel about it, and she just like mm -hmm. does the same thing as the Mako stuff. Pulls it in, vectorizes and it. I think it. that's extremely evident where you find kind of like these big blocks of color that blend in with the mm -hmm. line art. Um, specifically in the one on the left, I'm seeing with her lips. Like it's such a bold, like no outline piece of the work where everything else has an outline but it's because the outline and the fill are of the same color so it just feels like this block of color but since it's the lips it just it works which is really cool striking um it's yeah, also it's really cool easy. and inspiring to see that she's finding ways to kind of juxtapose her work alongside these kind of quotes that she's making um mm. and she's giving um herself credit to it as well as she's going and um it adds a whole new personality to the words because when you read you know imagine the person you'd become if you stop trying to fix others and put that energy into yourself like that can feel so many different ways but then you put mm. it next to this like woman who's obviously feeling herself with like a beret and you're like oh okay this is even a little bit more spicy than <laughs> i thought it was <laughs> definitely um, i love that i think she even illustrates herself in a lot of the work i think mm -hmm. that's her on the uh, right there so even like her hair is obviously it's very symbolic and you can reference and tell that it is her um, straight off the bat. I even like a smoking a little cigarette, <laughs> just that touch yeah. of um, edge. <laughs> but there is like a bit yeah, of a uncanniness to some of them. And it feels mm. almost like uh, in the same way we were talking about Frida Kahlo yesterday um, on the stream with Ursula. And we're just talking about the idea of self-perception and the idea of representing yourself in a way that might not be along the traditional senses of beauty. Um, 
not to um, say that like it has much to do with shit. I've seen pictures of her. She's very traditionally beautiful as well. Um, and it's just interesting to kind of see her portray herself in a way that is a little bit more uncanny and a little bit more like yeah. off kilter. Um, yeah. And it's kind of a cool self-expression. Yeah, definitely. I love that. Even adding like the little line detail of like her Adam's apple, something not yeah. necessarily you'd see in feminine drawings, but she's added that in there to give it like a slightly masculine kind of feel. Yeah. Or like even there's like this double chin or this like kind of like mm. buck tooth vibe with this character on the left, which I know isn't necessarily her, but, um, but it, it is still somebody that she is like representing. We're, we're not supposed to look at the subject and like necessarily look down on them or yeah. feel separated from them. We're supposed to kind of relate to these characters that she's creating um, with these crazy glasses. And uh, I would love glasses <laughs> like this. Just like, oh, that was an like epic. <laughs> right? Um, so, so she cool. has a book that she recently um, brought up that she's like selling. I have not read it. I learned about her um, yesterday when we talked about her, but women don't owe you pretty. Um, <laughs> and it really seems like a really cool, um, like self uh, expression, self analysis, mm -hmm. kind of like manifesto to the world of um, feminism. I mean, th I mean, mm -hmm. this is just my assumption, obviously I want to give you the space to talk, um, but uh, it is, it seems like it's really cool that she's, pairing her art with something that she really cares about and something that she feels like she has a platform to say. Definitely. Yeah. And I think like, she's so um, just unique to her. Um, she uses her own power, you know, her own unique individual style and expression, I guess, to like have made this platform for herself. And she's really used that to become her own star of the show, I guess. I think she even like um, draws her own type. You can see even the contents there, the word contents. Um, she's illustrated that, which I really like. And it just fits so well with her type of illustrations and her colors. And it feels quite retro in the same sense as well. I love that retro. Yeah, definitely vibe. 70s vibes. Very cool. um, yeah. Which is one of my favorite decades. I don't know if that'll wane because it's kind of popular right now, but I love 70s vibes. <laughs> um, uh, would this ever be something that you would kind of find yourself? Um, replicating in a way of putting yourself at the center of your work Ooh. like you kind of already do with TikTok a little bit but would you ever illustrate yourself or kind of create a self-portrait um, in your image I don't I don't know I, it's hard I think drawing people especially when you're drawing faces is such a different skill and I actually think I haven't really dived into it much I'm very much like objects um, uh, you know food that sort of stuff is what i'm kind of driven by pizza, and raw, but pineapple pizza, pizza, pizza love pizza, pizza ponies <laughs> yeah, all the above pizza and ponies <laughs> exactly. Take pony creative. that is me in a nutshell um but i would love to i think i should explore it because i don't think and like looking at her stuff you don't have to make it aesthetically pleasing or like the perfect pretty woman you can make it yeah. your own and it can still look really amazing I think it even showcases more about yourself if you're not making it exact you know the proportions are yeah. a little bit off things like that really cool yeah and like you look at the hair um here on the left one mm. or actually even on the right as well where there's like random parts where she's really like heavily detailed in the strokes of hair um and yeah it's like very heavy to be like this is a crease in the hair whereas there's other places on the left um in the top right of the composition where it's like a big flat plane of just white and you're like there's a line to tell you like this is where hair is but you don't really have the details of somewhere else and um it has yeah. a cool style to it definitely um kind of says, it's that, like she's like presenting effect. oh say again it's kind of like that shading effect that I've sort of used in my drawings today. Like it's a different mm -hmm. way of doing it where you can shade darker without making it a color, I guess. Right. And like adding that depth. Yeah. Um, Voodoo says it's like she's presenting real women with all our unique looks and facts, not just all us all looking perfect. Um, and Definitely. Reverb Mike says, I'm not sure who can look perfect. So <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> I think <it's> <laughs> um, so we've got about 10 minutes left. Um, and I want to make sure that we can touch on anything that you want to, um, especially with the piece that you've been working on. Um, Amazing. Do you want to take a look, one last look uh, kind of at what we've created? Is there anything else you want to do with this piece before we uh, say goodbye? Yeah, sure thing. So I'll quickly go through something that um, I do a lot in my work and you'll see all the time. I'm just going to shift these two pieces over because um, I'm going to work with these pieces that I uh, just the objects without the grain on top. Um, so I'm going to 
quickly just draw another rectangle over here because I'm just going to copy uh, all these details we've done over to here. Um, so from here, what I'm going to do is actually create a pattern, a repeating pattern. Um, now, a few years ago, I would have done this all manually, <laughs> but you can repeat these patterns um, and make a really cool sort of, um, they're like a swatch basically. So if I've got our vectors, you know, maybe um, in a brand I would create a few more or if it's a different illustration, I'd create around 10, give a really nice number in there and then you can select them all object and we'll go and make a pattern. Boom. You can already see it Whoa, starting to. so Whoa. fast. <laughs> so fast. You can see it starting to be put together. Even that looks cool. <laughs> yeah, and also automatically, like I kind of want it on like um, like a like a print of like a fabric of some sort. I could see it on a yeah, bench some kind of fabric that would be epic. I mean, like a poster, It'd be really cool. So you can change the position of the pattern, whether it's um, like brick by row, brick by column. So this is like adjusting. So even that looks really good. Um, adjusting how the pattern shifts around your few objects and you can go in and adjust those objects to suit but the reason why i actually didn't pull in the ones with the texture is the patterns can slow your illustrator down once again quite a bit mm -hmm. so um it's nice to just use the um not so complex graphics for these um and you can also add texture to it afterwards like i know i, I said i don't like to i mean i this is what i do i do rasterize it but also you can take yeah. something, lay it all out and then put it in when it's like not all vector you rasterize it and you bring it in you know if it's large yeah. enough obviously um exactly uh, so if we go that's down also the beauty of clipping masks and what have you exactly that's the one so now um when you click down it doesn't actually showcase the pattern but it's basically just hidden in your swatches so if we go over to our swatches Woohoo! And you can see wow, how that looks really so cool. neat. It you actually does look really good. Website or like a, I'm trying to think like a like a iPhone uh, case or wallpaper. Yeah, mm. that would be epic. You know, you could even go as far as maybe um, if we want to add even some like slight uh, variation on the the background color could look really nice. So you could come in here. Um, and just like layering it all up to give it some kind of depth and effect. Um, you can go in here. It could look a bit whack, but you can kind of see what I mean. If you wanted to add yeah. some kind of like slight shadowing to it, it's not quite right there, but I actually prefer it without it. But it gives this us like feels really very cool print effect. to me again. I feel like you yeah. would do well in print. I feel like you have that, that you. brain there, even if you uh, have never done it before. <laughs> And even editing the patterns is so easy. You know, you can select them uh, if we just unlock all those and then go back into it. Oh, I think I've unlocked the wrong one. Here we go. And double click into it and it will bring up the pattern again. I think. Here we go. Boom. <laughs> Boom. And you can change it, edit it, add new objects um, and things like that. So yeah, that is how I create my cool. patterns. Yeah. Um, now, real quick, I think I saw something of it, and correct me if I'm wrong, but did you do any type explorations of this? I feel like you did. I think I saw I, some yesterday. Did you keep them at all? I did. I will actually open those up for you because I'll open up the test run. Oh, no. It says it doesn't exist. Um, we're going to quickly Big find shout it. out to Christy. I, you know, I, I reached out to her to have her on the show, and um, she had already gone through and, like, workshopped some stuff just so she knew a place where to go. So I really appreciate the extra Um effort and work that you oh, put into geez. this um you really knocked it out of the park right while i was just like sitting down and doing it we made this all on stream i say we it was you but she made this all <laughs> on stream live um which is is i mean we've only been live for two hours and we've done so many different things outside of just mm -hmm. illustrating the fact of how quickly this came to be is is really cool so thank you for thank you all really your quick. hard work oh. in there Hi, um no you did a little arc of the text above the dakota dixie did you do that by applying the text to a path or did you use a distort um i used on the uh apply it to a path you could oh, okay. use it also to the um distorting it um the reason why i did the path is because it gives it actually puts the letters on the circle mm -hmm. um so if we uh, use this and let's just paste this over Actually, I'm just going to copy and paste that whole one. 
make it a bit easier. But if we yeah. had uh, this text here, I'll show you what I mean. And if we were going to distort it a little bit with the warp options, if you're putting it on the arc, you can see it actually stretches out the letters a bit. And I didn't want that, yeah. that effect for this. So I really wanted them just to sit really nicely curved uh, like so. And, and some of the rules point. of graphic design, like never adjust the text, never manipulate type, never stretch it. Those are things that I think like they really came to be maybe around the turn of the millennia. Um, mm -hmm. And we have mm -hmm. finally gotten far enough away now that we can like start to then learn how to break those rules. Um, and it's not always the case. Like in this case, I think it was the best case scenario to use it on a circle so that it doesn't warp it. But it is really exciting also to see that... Um, we can start using those warp tools again. I mean, you don't always could, but like there is more appreciation to the idea of being like, okay, let's see how the forms can be manipulated to create new things that haven't been viewed before. Um, and for sure. As you just ad adjusted that K, which like you made modifications to the typeface. Um, and did you do that by uh, just outlining the type and then breaking it apart with like Pathfinder? Yeah, that's the one. So I love like when you start to outline text, you can really start to manipulate it. So if I was creating a brain, I'd outline it even. Um, let's just ungroup it so everything's individual. But you can start to make those adjustments like moving that K. I just thought it looked, didn't love it how it was sitting there. So I pushed it in, hugged it in a little bit. You can even um, change the spacing between the letters. There's so much. You could even do things as, you know, maybe I want this curve here to sit really nicely with the T and we could start to draw this out just to like mm -hmm. give it more of a flow which is mm -hmm. which is all those little details um, can really help just create a really awesome looking brand you know maybe I was going to do the same thing here now do you feel like um, you do that a lot when you're adjusting brands and creating identities yeah because I think it's important I mostly work off um like typefaces that are already there I don't necessarily draw my own but what I'll do from here is I'll just manipulate it change mm -hmm. it to suit maybe I want a more edgy feeling to the the type so I'll give it more points something like that to enhance it just a little bit more and um create its own unique look um yeah doing I actually don't love those there but you can kind of get my Get my drift. We'll explore get those little drift. bits, um, try new things, and then, okay. yeah. Well, once again, I'm so proud them. of everything that was uh, accomplished on this stream. It looks so wonderful. Um, <laughs> thank you so much to uh, Christy to um, walk us through all this. Uh, I have your social underneath you for your Behance, your Instagram, and TikTok. Uh, is those the best places to find you um, under Pink Pony Creative? Yes, those are the, my top social media um, platforms. TikTok and Instagram are definitely where you can get hold of me. Um, otherwise, you can also visit my website, pinkponycreative.com. Also, under Pink Pony Creative, real quick, um, there is the part that we, I, I wanted to talk a little bit more about it, um, but uh, you have a shop as well on there where you sell um, like uh, different bundles for proposals uh, that people I can do. use and they're already ready to go. You just kind of, drop and shop and it's a, it's a template and i think it's cool you have accessibility for um like an artboard layout for five bucks if you're looking for something on the lower cost side but you can also go as far as like normally it's a hundred dollars but you have it on say on sale which is cool um for a band proposal and guidelines um and it's a wonderful way to get your stuff in front of a client especially if you don't have time um exactly you don't want to have to deal with that so Definitely. Yeah, no, they're a really cool, um, easy, like agency style template for your proposals, your guidelines, everything's there. Um, so hop on, shop. Well, <laughs> Would out. love the support. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. It was such a pleasure to have you. Um, you're a delight to have on stream. And uh, I hope everyone goes and checks you out on TikTok and Instagram. Oh, no, thank so. you, Ryan. It was an absolute pleasure to have this live with you. So thank you. Of course. Well, thank you so much. All right, guys. Um, we will be back uh, tomorrow um, uh, for Offset, and it will be at the 9 o'clock time as usual. There is a loaded day tomorrow filled with plenty of content. Um, so this is the rest of the day. You'll see that we have the Daily Creative Challenge up next, and it's a replay. It's an encore. Um, but make sure you stay tuned. And then tomorrow, we've got a Doobie Font show with Snoop Nebula, Annika, and Claudie to all walk us through um, different 
uh, great content. So thank you for everyone so much. Um, my name is Ryan Selvey. Um, I will see you all tomorrow. Have a great day. And thanks again for watching. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.